Hello students, my name is Priyanka. I hope you all are keeping well. So, today I am here to start with the chapter 4 of geography that is map. As you all know, we are in second unit. So, let's start. Get the ball rolling. Maps, types of maps, features of a map, sketches, plan. Geographical terms, globe. A three-dimensional model of the earth. A globe is the three-dimensional model of the earth. Have you all seen it? Map. Representation of the earth's surface or a part of it drawn on a flat surface to a scale. Compass. An instrument is used for finding direction. I hope it will be interesting for you. Plan. A two-dimensional view of an area drawn to scale. So, when we want to study only about a part of the earth, a country, state, a city or a village, we need to use a map. So, let's start with the maps. A map is a true representation or a drawing of any area or the earth on a flat surface. It is drawn according to a scale maps given as accurate information of an area. They are easy to carry and can help to make comparisons between one area and the another. The only drawback with map is that they do not show the accurate shape and size of continents and oceans, especially as we move towards the two poles. The art of preparing map is called cartography. In order to represent a sphere as a flat surface, we get some distortions. The maximum distortions will be seen around the poles. So, let's connect to geography. The word map is derived from the Latin word mappa, which means sheet or napkin. History of maps. Map making is not a new concept but it is an older concept. In the early times, the Greek scholars made maps. The science of map making was developed by a Greek scholar, Claudius Ptolemy. He is also known as the father of cartography. The science of map making is called cartography. Advantages of maps. A map gives more information about the earth's surface in a simple and graphical manner, which is very easy to understand. A flat map can show large area on a single piece of paper. It is very easy to compare cities, countries and other places as they are visible at the same time. It is easy to carry maps to any place as it can be folded and stored conveniently. Maps generally use signs and symbols in different colors. This make it more understandable. Maps may be drawn for specific purpose. For example, a weather map shows the weather conditions at a given time and place. A political map shows the boundary of countries, states, etc. Children, let's see the types of maps. Maps are of many types. The most commonly used maps are the first one is political map as you seen in the picture. See how the political map looks. Now political map divided in an area into administrative units such as country, state, districts, villages, cities or towns with the help of lines to show borders or boundaries. If we summarize it, the political map of India shows the states and its capital and small cities and villages. So, we are moving towards the second type of map that is a physical map. So children, are you able to see the physical map? Maps which display identifiable landmarks of the earth are known as physical maps. Physical maps shows natural features of the earth such as mountains, plateaus, plains, rivers, oceans, etc. These maps also show the altitudes at various place temperatures, difference, etc. Physical maps are also known as relief map. Do you know children? 
physical map shows the physical features of India like the forests, the plateaus, the mountains, rivers, yes, all these we show on a physical map. Third one is thematic map. So children, are you able to see the thematic map? What they are? They provide a specific information such as representing climatic condition, distribution of minerals, crops, industries, population, vegetation, transportation, etc. They are also called distribution maps. Such maps can be seen in an atlas. An atlas is a collection of maps in a form of a book. That is thematic map. So connect to geography. Map is not the invention of modern age. Maps have been in use ever since man started exploring different parts of the earth. The credit of laying the foundation of the art and science of map making goes to ancient Greek philosophers and scholars like Aristotle, Eratosthenes, Ptolemy, etc. Connect to geography. Mercato and Haunton in 1636 made the first attempt to publish a collection of maps in the form of book. Its cover had a picture showing the Greek mythological giant Atlas holding the earth since then. A book of map is called an Atlas. Fourth one, topographical maps or survey maps. Topographical maps show great details of the natural feature of a small area including rivers, lakes, mountains, etc. Along with man-made areas like parks, wells, cities and towns. Features of a map How to read and interpret a map Title The title tells us what the map is going to show or tell us whether about the administrative unit, landforms, climatic condition, distribution of crops, wildlife, population and so on. Directions Directions are also very significant component of the maps. You can take any map. You will find an arrow printed on the right hand corner of the map. The alphabet N is written above the arrow. This arrow is called the north line. It shows north direction in the map. After knowing the north direction, you can easily find out other directions such as east, west and south. The direction are of two types. One is cardinal direction and the second one is intermediate direction. Are you all able to see these two directions? So let's start with the cardinal direction. So see what is cardinal direction? Are you able to see the arrows? See in the picture there are four arrows. On the upper side north, here west, east and south. East, west, north and south are the cardinal directions. These are also called the cardinal points. These directions intersect each other at right angle, okay, that is at 90 degree. They intersect at 90 degree. And the second one is intermediate direction. So are you able to see how many intermediate directions there are? There are 8 directions. Directions situated between two consecutive cardinal points are called the intermediate directions. See the figure given alongside. There are lines between any two consecutive cardinal points. They are intermediate points or directions. Northeast, Northwest, Southeast, Southwest are the intermediate directions. So have you seen in the cardinal directions there were four directions, four points. But in intermediate directions between two cardinal direction there is one more direction like between north and west it is northwest between north and east 
it is northeast between west and south it is southwest and between east and south it is southeast so have you got it connect to geography instrument to find out direction that is magnetic compass it is used for the finding the main directions the needle of the compass always points to the and as direction that is north south direction the arrow of needle that is pointed towards the north has a point embedded on it a compass needle always points to magnetic north this compass is mostly used by the mariners and seamen to find direction while sailing the compass needle always point towards the north scale scale is one of the main components in a map without the scale the map cannot be called a map instead we will call it a sketch when you go to the stationery shop you ask the shopkeeper for a scale in inches and centimeters which are helpful in various ways actually these divisions tell us about the ground distance on the map let's say 1 cm ratio 40 km it means distance of 1 cm on the map represent distance of 40 km on the actual ground most of the times this distance relationship is expressed in ratio of distance between the same two points on ground the decision of the choice of scale purely lies with the cartographer he has to draw the map with accuracy and uses intelligence to scale down the features to fit on a small piece of paper the function of scale is to tell the reader about the distance and the actual distance and area on the ground a scale can be represented in the following three ways statement of scale in this we simply write a statement for example 1 cm represents 5 km representative fraction rf in this scale is represented in ratio or a fraction it tends to show the relationship between the map distance and the actual ground distance for example one ratio 75000 represents one unit on the map and shows the 75000 units on the ground here the unit for both distance is the same graphical bar scale in this type of scale the distance is shown with the help of a bar having primary and secondary subdivision this type of scale is found mostly in all the maps the scale size will change with the map a map showing a small area in detail street map is a large scale map for example 5 cm on a map shows 500 m only of the ground a map showing a large area without much detail a world map is a small scale map for example 5 cm on a map show 500 km of the ground to show large areas like continents or countries on a paper a small scale is used for example 4 cm on the map can represent 400 km on the ground such a map is called a small scale map when a small area like a town or village is to be represented on a paper we use a large scale for example 4 cm on the map can represent 400 m only on the ground such a map is called a large scale map more detail are available on a large scale map than small scale map so let's connect to geography a scale is the ratio of the map distance to the actual ground distance conventional symbols so see children what are conventional symbols a map becomes more useful if more information or details are available from it suppose we want to show the location of bridge river well 
post office, police station, etc. in a survey map. It is impossible to draw their actual picture or write their names at the appropriate places in the map due to the limitation of space. So these objects are shown in the form of symbol that occupy lesser space and are internationally accepted. Words over the same conventional symbols are used and understood by all. Some of the conventional symbols are listed. Sometimes colors are used to show purpose. Example, blue for water bodies, green for grasslands, brown for hills, etc. The distance, direction and symbols are the three main components of map as you seen in the picture. The picture is of conventional symbol used in maps. So see how we use these symbols in the map and which symbol shows which area. Sketches. A sketch is usually a rough diagram made from one's imagination without measuring the actual distance on the ground. It is actually a map with outlines drawn without a scale and also without signs or symbols. Sketch may be called a rough map. For example, drawing a sketch of India on blackboard to explain a sketch can be drawn more easily in comparison of map and planes. Another example explaining the location of a shopping complex or a market or a cinema hall from your residence. So, are you able to see the picture? A sketch showing many locations in an area. Like if you are living in a South Delhi, so you will show the market, hospital, your school, anything. Okay, so that is a sketch. Now we are moving towards the plan. A plan is detailed drawing which is done to show any small area on a large scale. Sometimes a sketch is made to help people prepare a proper plan for the area. Just like map, a plan is also made as per scale. However, the scale of a plan is much larger. Unlike a sketch, a plan will show actual measurement accurately. Most common types of plans are used for the construction of houses and buildings. Geographical information aids like globe, map, plan, sketch are of great importance in the various field of knowledge and activity. So children, are you able to see the plan? This is a plan of your classroom. So children, you can also show the plan of your house. And you can also show the plan of the playground. Comparison between a map, sketch and plan. So see. This table is categorized into three parts. The first one is area, second one is scale and the third one is details shown. So the first one is map. Area covers a large area. Scale usually drawn on a small scale. Details shown cannot show many details. Sketch area may cover a small or large area. Scale not drawn to scale. Detail shown does not show all details but only the necessary ones. And the last one is plan. Area covers a small area. Scale drawn on a large scale. Details shown shows accurate details. So children let's wrap up. A map is a true representation or a drawing of any area of the earth on a flat surface. Various types of maps, political, physical, thematic and topographic are prepared for different purposes. Components of map are title, direction, scale and conventional symbols. Signs and symbols helps us to understand a map better. A map without a scale is known as a sketch. And the last one is a plan is a drawing of a small area on a large scale. So children, it's time to say bye. We'll meet in the next class.